What's up, Vloggy Pilots? Hey, Vloggy Poncho here, and in this video, we're gonna play a game called Which Object Ruined Poncho's Day? Was it item number one, item number two, item number three, or item number four? I'll give you a hint. The correct answer gave me a flat tire. Can't decide? I'll use a lifeline for you. 50-50! Was it the tennis ball or the rusty piece of a socket wrench? If you said rusty piece of a socket wrench, you're correct. So yeah, long day at Pancho's house. Um, this actually happened a few days ago, a couple days ago. The, the last vlog I put up when I was making my apology and talking about my goals. Uh, after that, I, I went bowling with a buddy from work, and uh, I bowled okay. My best game was 119, so I wasn't happy with it, but I did do something new for the first time. Uh, I got three games over 100 in a row, so I'm getting more consistent, uh, which, is, which is really the goal. Because if I can consistently get over 100, eventually I'll get lucky and get 150. So that's, that's progress towards the goal. It's a good thing. I decided I'm going to add another goal to that, in that list. I want, to, my goal is going to be to bowl, uh, eventually, like the long term goal is, bowl a game, uh, bowl a score higher than the weight I weigh when I bowl that, that day. So if I were to bowl today, I would need to bowl 178. Uh, and then, hopefully, I can get down to a low enough weight and get good enough at bowling that those numbers pass each other. That's the goal. I actually decided to adjust the goalposts on my uh, weight loss goal. I, I looked at the numbers, and a suggestion from Maddie actually uh, convinced me that I should change my goal from 165 to 155. Uh, it's going to take a little longer. That's another 10 pounds. So I'm thinking four months for the whole process is a reasonable weight loss uh, target. It's something like one and a half to 1.7 pounds a week, which is basically the, the calorie count that I, I feel most comfortable with. Uh, I, think, I think I could maintain for four months or longer. Uh, so I'm still going to try and do checkpoints each month and see how far I am, how far along I am. And it's February 28th today, so it's basically tomorrow is basically the first real day of this. Although I've already gone down a couple pounds just from fluctuation this week. Again, I've, I've said it, it doesn't count. Since I'm weighing myself so often, I'm going to need to weigh in under a number three times in a row before I consider myself having passed that, that number. So I'll alert you when I break 175. But, uh, yeah, so I went bowling after making that vlog, and then I, had, I bowled a couple of good games, and then my buddy left, and I went to bowl another game by myself, but I was, I, I might have already worn out my hand, and I was getting tired, so I was bowling terribly. I had gone like, through like five frames and got like 25 points, I just said forget it, and I walked out halfway through the game, which is no big deal, they cleared the lane anyway. And, uh, then on the way home, I, uh, I had something that never happened to me before, I got a flat tire. And it wasn't like, oh, it needs a little air, it was flat. Flat. So I'm driving down the road, uh, I'm like a mile from my apartment, and I'm going along, and I, I just hear like a muffled pop thump noise. It's hard to describe what it was, because it was a pop, but it was nothing like a pop of a balloon or bubble gum or... It's like bubble wrap. Those, those are all high-pitched pops. This It was a, definitely a pop, but it was a very low-pitched pop. So, I don't, really know how, I don't really know how to describe it. It's like popping a really thick, heavy balloon, which is what a tire is. But, uh, it's difficult to just... I'd never heard that sound before, and the fact that I heard it behind me, like, from outside the car, from inside the car, it was even stranger, and I wasn't sure what I heard at first. I sounded... A little bit like I ran something over. Like if you run over a stick, you kind of like thump as you hit it, and it kind of like it might go up and hit the bottom of the carriage, undercarriage of the car, or whatever. But it was different than that. And then right after it, I noticed that I was getting like a noise, like a 
noise coming from the back. And I wasn't sure if it was in the song on the radio or what, so I turned off the music and I listened. And then I wasn't sure if it was the engine noise or if I was hearing something behind me. And so I, I tested it and I, I hit the gas to accelerate a little bit to see if me hitting the ignition would make the thing speed up. And it didn't at first, because I was still going the same speed. And so I knew it was my tire and not my engine making the sound. Plus it sounded like it was coming from behind me. That, that, that can be deceptive. Uh, and I wasn't sure. I, I, was, I still wasn't convinced. I still didn't want to believe it. Uh, and so I... I, I, I always have thought that if you had a flat tire, it would cause a lot of drag on that side of the vehicle. And so I just kept my, my foot on the gas going to the same speed. And I just kind of like loosely let go of the wheel. I'm kind of hold, like not holding it with my hands right next to it so I can grab it if I need to. And the theory is that if there's a flat tire over here, there's going to be drag from that. And it's going to kind of not roll as well. So it's going to pull your vehicle to that side. And you'll be able to feel it going. And I, I wasn't getting that. I think it's because it had just popped. So I think in theory that would work if you had like a pretty flat tire, but if it's just a little low, it doesn't make that much of a difference. And so I uh, I tried that, and it didn't really work, and so it was kind of inconclusive. And then when I slowed down for a red light, I definitely could tell, oh yeah, this I slowed down and it, it slowed down a lot, and then when I stepped back up, it stepped back up again, and I hear this boom, 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 noise. And it wasn't that loud, it was very subtle. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm just doing like the, the overtone of, of like the pattern of how fast it was going. But it was it was hidden in with the road noise and the wind, and it wasn't that loud. So I wasn't sure what was up until I, I pulled into my uh, apartment complex and I went over a speed bump. And first two wheels go over fine. So the first two wheels go over fine. Second two wheels go over like that. <laughs> I'm like, shit. Fuck. Ah! That's when I was sure. Uh, my, my car tilted when I went over the speed bump. <laughs> like, that tire is not there anymore. It's giving up the ghost. And so I, I was just pulled into my parking space outside my apartment, and uh, I, I, I was thoroughly annoyed, because this was the same day that everything went to shit at work. Uh, basically, I had Monday and Tuesday this week were normal work days, and it felt like a fucking vacation, because I've been so busy for the past month. And then Wednesday, my manager was like, oh, you're happy again? What is this? Get on another project! Go... Put your life into this. And so uh, that's what I did. And that's what I'm doing for uh, like another month, approximately, uh, going on. And so it was the first day of that. I was coming down from my relative high of a normal work week. Uh, and then I went and bowled a terrible game. I was frustrated. It got a flat tire. And I, I turn off the engine. I get out of the car. And I just hear... It was literally that, about that loud. And I was like, okay. I I walked back to over to the tire, and I uh, I couldn't see because it was night. It was like 11.30 at night. I, just, I, I pulled late at night. It's cheaper. Uh, I walked back to the tire, and I, I can't... I'm not... I'm, I don't remember making conscious decisions at this point. I'm just doing, because I'm, I've gone into total instinctual, angry poncho mode. That's the first time I've ever said that and actually meant that I was angry. Uh... And so I go back to the tire, and I get down on one knee, and I look. Because I want to know what the hell has done this to me. And I can it just happened that right on the top, I could hear. I don't remember thinking about what part of the tire it was. I just knelt down, and I could hear it. I immediately knew where it was. I reached in, and I felt there was a crack in the, there was, where the tread was, and there was a lump there. So I grabbed the lump and just <clears throat> took it out of the tire. And the tire went... <clears throat> <laughs> I can't even describe the sound. <laughs> like looking back, it was a funny noise. But it was like because the tire had been had been plugged with this joker, and uh, so it's just kind of it sounds about like that. And then I pull it out, and it just goes. <laughs> it's like I'm I'm done. It was like the last guffaw of air, just <laughs> and the car just goes. <laughs> Because when the tire was that flat, like it, the hole, I mean, you can see how big around that is. Uh, the hole just let all the air out of the tire, and the, the car like. <laughs> so the tire is like an inch and a half lower than it should be. It's so obvious looking at it, like that's a very flat tire. Like it had like like a jelly roll on the bottom from the extra rubber. And uh, so I, I pull this out, 
And I, I, I can see what it is in, in, the, in the street lamp, and I just, I pick it up, and I just, I put my arms on my side, and I look at my flat tire, and I just, like, I just drop it on the ground, and, like, tink, 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 on the asphalt. And I probably stood there for, like, a minute just staring at the tire. I was just in disbelief that I could have a day that shitty. <laughs> I, I, I honestly didn't believe it. For, like, I was in, like, I wasn't thinking at all. I was mentally just completely in denial. I was no conscious thought at all, totally refusing to acknowledge what had happened because I did not want to deal with it. And then I just kind of, I think I just got kind of mad. I was just like, fuck! And I just stood there for a while. Uh, and then I, I figured out what I had to do. I just, I took the thing inside so I could take a look at it and, I was like, I'm not going to change the tire at night. I can't see what we're doing. And so I, I got up the next morning, and uh, I slept in a little bit because I figured a flat tire is a pretty good excuse to be late for work. And I'm just looking for any excuse to be late for work with the kind of stuff I've been doing lately. And uh, so I got up, and about 10 o'clock, I went out there to the car to see what I could do. And I'd never changed a tire before. I knew, in theory, what I was supposed to do. And I, I know all the basic stuff about, like, which way to turn the nuts to loosen them, and which way to tighten them. And I knew the theory that, like, you, okay, you, you do this, and then you jack it off, and then you take the, the wheel off, and you put the other one on, and you let it back down, and then say, change the tire. It's not that complicated. And I knew where my spare tire was in the back of my Prius, and so I was like, in theory, I can I can change a tire. I don't need anybody's help for this. But I, I called my dad to ask him what uh, where I should look to get a replacement, because I was already thinking ahead how to handle that. And so I, uh, this was yesterday, this was happening. The day before yesterday was the, it happened, and then yesterday I was dealing with it. Today I finally got it fixed. But anyway, so I went out there to change the tire. And the experience of changing a tire was interesting, because the night it happened, I, I went to, out in the glove box, and I took out the driver's manual from my car, and I, I took it inside, and I sat right here and read it, and I sort of just walked through my, walked myself through mentally the steps to change the tire, just to make sure I wasn't missing anything important. I pretty much knew what I was going to have to do, and it was exactly what I expected, uh, according to the book. <laughs> then I got out there the next day, and there's some things I didn't think about, which is, firstly, was how extremely self-conscious I felt changing a tire. I don't know why, but I felt like everybody was on their porch just looking at me like, he ran like it. He doesn't even know how to drive. <laughs> and, uh... I actually brought a chair out there with me because I was like, this might take a while. I was right. <laughs> so I, I pulled my folding chair out there with me with my, my flashlight to look underneath things and, and the, the driver's manual again. And so I opened up the back of the Prius and there's like layers of stuff underneath the, the back of the hatchback. So I, like, I take the carpet layer out and put that in the back seat. And then there's like a plastic layer that is like got carpet glued to it. So it's like two layers of carpet. You take that and you like open it and it like, folds in half and you take it out, I put that in the back seat, and then there's, there's this big plastic bucket there with like a, a the jack, or not the jack, not yet, there's like the jack handle and the lug nut wrench are in there, so you take that big plastic box out, <laughs> put that onto the side, and then underneath there is the jack screwed onto the top of the tire holding it in place. So I unscrew that, take the jack out, take the tire out, which is actually a pretty decent spare tire, so it's like, like a 3,000 mile knife, it's not a crappy donut spare tire. I take all this stuff out, and then uh, I get down to business. I was able to identify on the bottom of the vehicle where the jack point was, uh, mostly because it looked like someone had jacked up my car a couple times in the past. Although I asked my dad, and he never changed his tire on it, so must have been at the shop. And so I was able to figure out, uh, you know, where that point was. But first and foremost, I had to get the lug nuts loosened because you know you don't take them off until it's up, but you start them while the car is still sitting on the ground, because it takes a good bit of force to start to loosen a lug nut. And I was, I was at one point concerned that I might not be able to get them off at all, because they were really fucking tight. Uh, they had obviously been put on by a machine, like a torque wrench, just kind of... <clears throat> if you watch NASCAR, you know exactly what a torque wrench is, but for most people, I mean, it's hard to explain exactly. It's basically like, like a screw, like an electric screwdriver, but it's a wrench on the end, and it's got... It's really powerful. Like the, the word torque refers to the force, the rotational force it's able to apply, you know, over a certain area. And I don't know the exact physics definition, but the point is, it can screw a bolt a lot, a lot tighter than you ever could uh, by hand. 
And so I know there's some no-nos for uh, unscrewing things, and one of them is that you don't want to, like, put the lug nut wrench on there and, like, jump on it or, like, hit it with a hammer or something, because any kind of, like, impact force or, like, jumping on it, you can just hurt yourself. And then any kind of impact force, like trying to hit it with a hammer, you can, like, crack things, or you can break the wrench and stuff like that. If it's a sudden jolt, it's, it's generally bad. And so I was like, I have to do this by hand. I'm going to pull on it until I can get it to turn. That was my plan. And so my first my first go, I was kind of trying, like, okay, I know I need to, like, get my whole body to this, because I know, I'm like, I cannot tighten. I cannot take off a wrench that was a, a, a lug nut that was put on by a torque wrench. And so I had the... the <laughs> Everyone calls them a tire iron. I call them a lug nut wrench because I'm a geek. I, I don't know. I have technical names for shit. I used, when I was a kid, I called a remote control a transducer because that's what my parents called it. And in terms of the, the physics of little sending a, a signal to the television, it is a transducer. That's the technical name for what that device does. It transduces a signal. Anyway, so that's another story for that. I'll tell out the end. So I, I have a, a lug nut wrench that's like 10 inches long. So I put my hands in there, it's like I'm turning basically at the lug nut. It's like, there's no mechanical advantage here at all. Very frustrating. Uh, and so I, my first thought was, okay, I'll put the wrench on at about this angle. And I'll, it's like, you know, it's, it's down here. I can't really demonstrate that very well with this angle. So imagine that the ground is like here. So I have my, the wrench is like this. I got my feet planted this way. And I'm holding the wrench and I'm kind of like, Leaning and like, uh, I'm like pulling with my back, and it's like, uh, I'm just, I can't, I can't even. I got like one of them to start, like almost, and it was like, I felt like it was gonna move, and it didn't. I was like, I'm just, this, this is really bad. And I was thinking, like, am I gonna have to call somebody to get these off? And I'm looking over, and they're doing construction at the building, uh, a couple of buildings down, and, and so I'm like, there's some burly men over there, I could get one of them to take these off for me. And I was like, no. Some, something, maybe my pride. Maybe just my wanting to say I knew how to change a tire. Something in me was like, I'm not going to ask somebody else to do this for me. Uh, I'm like, I will find a way. <laughs> I will make this work. And then I figured, okay, I'm, I'm not lifting right. I'm like forgetting everything I know about muscles. Um, I'm, I'm putting it my back. I'm probably going to hurt myself. And I had to stop for like a minute and I sat and thought. I was like, I need to just use my legs. I need to find a way to do this where I can use my legs. And so I ended up doing what felt originally like I was like a worse idea. It actually ended up working. I put the lug, lug, lug nut wrench on horizontally, like, you know, it, it's, you turn it, it fits like six ways, that it'll fit on there, so I found one that was close to horizontal, so it's like this far off the ground, which is kind of hard to get to, and so I like basically just squatted down, and held on with my arms, and I just pushed entirely with my legs, keeping my back straight, which is how you do like a, a squat, I guess is what the exercise is called. I don't lift, I don't know. And that worked fine. I was able to get all five of them off with a relative ease, actually. And once I started using my legs, I was able to do it. My, my, my quadriceps, which are the legs that you use to extend your muscle, your, to extend your legs, uh, are pretty much the only strong muscle in my body. <laughs> Just because they have to lift my fat ass up all the time. Plus, all, all the hiking I did back in high school, I've, like, permanently improved them. They've, they, have, they have a muscle tone that the rest of my body just totally lacks. And so once I got the lug nuts off, uh, I put the jack under the appropriate place, and very slowly, very scared, I was, I was like, I'm just afraid that this car is going to fall off of the jack, and something terrible is going to happen. And so I, I, jacked, I managed to get the car up, and I, I finger tightened the, all the lug nuts off, I pulled the, the tire off, and I put the spare on. I had to figure out which way to put the spare on, because I wasn't quite sure, like, I didn't say, like, outside, inside. I had to look at the picture really carefully in the, in the guide to make sure I had it on the right way. And then, you know, finger tighten the lug nuts, put the car back down, and then tighten the lug nuts. Now, one of the things that you might not know about uh, taking a tire off, or really more importantly, putting a tire on, is that, is the order, I actually did already know, I, I already knew this, I, I, my dad had told me when I was younger, I never used it, but I remembered it, is the order that you put the nuts on. So, I'm not going to demonstrate this. So there's usually five. Let me put something behind this. It's not so. Come here, you clipboard. Paper is suddenly blank. <laughs> what just happened? There we go. So you don't take them off in like a circular pattern. You don't go around. 
you take them off like a star pattern, kind of. You know, the way you would you draw a star, you'd be like, you yeah, know, like that. And the reason you do that when, you, when you're tightening them is because you don't want to... You want it to be, the tire to be perfectly even and, like, I, it's, I don't want to say plumb or level. Flush, I guess is the best word. You want it to, the tire to be straight up and down and not at an angle left or right. There's no word for that, is there? I mean, straight up and down is plumb. But that just means vertical. It also has to be pointing directly forward. Anyway, in order to accomplish that, you don't want to, like, tighten all these three and then tighten these three. Is you, you can end up with it like it getting kind of like stuck on the threading of the bolts, and it can uh, end up not quite straight when you're done. So if you do the star pattern, it makes sure that you, you get it kind of uh, evenly distributed as you tighten them. It keeps the tire pointing in the right direction, and so uh, I mean like precisely, it matters when you're going at a higher speed. Uh, so uh, put the put the tire back on, and I felt pretty happy about what I'd done. It looked really funny because the the spare tire had like. Instead of uh, chrome in the middle, it was like bright yellow, very weird looking. And they want you to know that it should not be on, be on there for long periods. <sighs> and so then I, you know, I put the stuff back in the trunk in the reverse order, and I went to uh, online. I made an appointment at the. I just I didn't want to deal with trying to find somewhere to get a replacement tire. I just I'm I'm just gonna go to the Toyota dealership. I don't care. It's, it's like literally two minutes down the road, and it saves me from having to shop around or do anything else. So I went online, made an appointment with there, and I took the car over there really slowly on the spare, just trying to be careful with it. And then I sat there for like an hour, and I sh they gave, they, I gave them the popped tire which I had in the trunk, and uh, it was the hole was too big to patch, so I had to buy another tire. Which I get the feeling they would tell me that even if the hole was small enough to patch, because it's a fucking car dealership, and they're de like their whole job is to suck as much money out of you as possible. I'm convinced. <laughs> I shouldn't say this. But I'm convinced that, that any any company that's involved with cars is evil. They just want to suck as much money out of you as possible. And it's pretty much true. Uh, GM actually is going through a, a recall right now. And you might have heard about it on the news. Uh, supposedly it's like an ignition issue that I don't know what exactly the story is, but it's responsible for 13 deaths. And the news media are saying that GM knew about it back in 2004 and didn't do anything. Uh, which r makes me think of the scene from Fight Club, the very beginning of Fight Club, when uh, Norton is doing his, talking about his job with the guy on the plane. He talks about, you know, looking at the, the burnt body inside the car and all that, and he says, like, if A is the cost of doing a recall, and B is the potential loss to lawsuits for not doing a recall, you know, if, uh, the cost, if A is bigger than B, we don't do a recall. And then the guy on the plane is like, what car company do you work for? He's just like, a major one. <laughs> it's like, they were talking about GM. <laughs> yeah, so we knew about a problem uh, like in 2004 that's now responsible for 13 deaths. And I guess it cost us less to not do a recall. But now we have to because people are fucking dying. Uh, like 100,000 vehicles or something like that have to be recalled. Anyway... Uh, so I'm at the dealership getting as much money sucked out of me as possible. This is actually the Toyota dealership, but it doesn't matter. All car companies will do this to you. Uh, really, your only mechanic that's not going to rip you off is a mom-and-pop mechanic who depends on word-of-mouth for his business. That's really it. Because if he depends on word-of-mouth, he can't rip you off, at least not much. Uh, but a big dealership that has like the big brand stuck on the outside of the building, people who have that kind of car are going to be like, that's where I should go. This makes sense, right? Uh, and then they just rip you off. And so, of course, the, of course the hole's too big to patch. Of course they can't patch the tire. It only cost me $23 to patch the tire, but they can ask for 140 if it's a new tire. So that's what happened. And then, of course, I knew they were going to pull this shit. They always pull this shit. I've heard stories. Everybody says it. I was, so, they, so yesterday I went in there, sat there for an hour. It took them an hour to look at the tire and go, no, we can't patch this. And we don't have one either. Come back tomorrow. I'm like, okay, great. Thanks for letting you sit for an hour. So then I went to work for the rest of the day. I went back in today after work, and uh, I told them when I was going to be there. Like, I basically had an appointment with the technician. I still took them, like, two and a half hours to do all this. But basically, after about an hour and a half, they came back, and they're like, oh, okay, we, we replaced the tire, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, oh, do you want a, a complimentary uh, alignment check? 
which is to see if all your tires are pointing forward, like I was talking about earlier with the spare. And I was like, sure, why not? Well, actually, I think I asked, how long will that take? <laughs> because I was sitting there, crap. He was like, oh, like 20 minutes. And I was like, all right, sure, do an alignment check. And then, uh, of course, you know, lo and behold, my tires are out of alignment. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? You know, if, if I, if they'd been like, you want us to do a complimentary, just look at everything on the car? I'm like, oh yeah, go ahead. You know what? And they're going to come back and be like, everything's wrong with your car. We need to fix everything. Give us a thousand dollars. That's how it goes. <laughs> oh. There are only a few professions of people that I, as a group, dislike and distrust. Immediately coming to mind are mechanics and doctors. Fuck those people, man. I just and I have no... Ugh, I just I can't stand them. So, of course, the, oh, the comes back and he shows me this, like, fancy printout that I'm not supposed to be able to understand because I'm an idiot, right? I don't know how cars work. I look at the sheet and it's like... Oh, look, it's in red. Everything is red. I better let them, I better pay them $80 to fix this, too. And he, I, he, God, the customer service was so bad. Just, oh, oh. The guy had, like, a bad ankle or something. He had crutches, so, like, whatever. But instead of, like, there's, a, like, a waiting area I've been sitting in for, like, two hours, and rather than yelling my name or coming over to me, he wheels from, like, 20 feet away, and he kind of, like, what are you doing? I gave you my name, my phone number, and my address. If you can't even, if you can't piece out of this whole form I filled out, what piece of information would get my attention if you set it across the room? Like you, clearly you're not qualified to be anything other than a mechanic. Let me put it that way. Uh, so he just was trying to use sign language to get my attention because my name wouldn't have worked. Uh, and then finally, I, I go over there and talk to him. And he's like, oh yeah, everything's out, of, everything's out of alignment, you know, your tires are pointing to the left, and it's going to be even where, give us more money. Uh, and so I was trying to like, get him to admit that it wasn't a big deal. Because I have no idea, I really don't know whether my tires being out of alignment is a big deal. But my immediate suspicion is that it's not, and they're trying to rip me off. Which is a fair assumption to make, honestly, that's the way to play it safe. Assume they're trying to rip you off, and try to get out of everything. And so I look at the sheet, and I read the numbers. Like, they don't think you can do that, apparently. Um, I'm, like, I'm a math major. I was a math major. I have a degree in mathematics. With honors, I can look at this printout and pretty much figure out what it means. Like, oh, look, right here it says 2.08, and then there's a little circle next to it. Is that a temperature? Is that the No, it's degrees! That's how far the tires are off from straight. Two degrees! <laughs> And I feel like that's bullshit. I feel like that doesn't matter at all. Like, two degrees? I can't even demonstrate with my hands how far two degrees is. It's pretty much pretty perfectly fucking straight. And then I kind of mellowed. And I thought about it for a second, and I'm like... I have no idea, really, if that's actually bad. Maybe two degrees matters at 75 miles an hour. I honestly don't know. I'm not qualified to make that, that judgment. And I didn't care enough at that point to want to argue with the guy. And he'd already done the fucking check. And I just... I could have done research or something. I just... I, I, I didn't care. I got a bonus today. I, my, I got paid today my, my yearly bonus for that, for working for GM, which is pretty nice, actually. I would say that's, that's good. And so I was like, I feel like I had, I feel like I had money. So I was like, whatever, just... Take my money. I don't even care. Just I didn't say that. I said, okay, do it. <laughs> I didn't even say, go ahead, fix the alignment. I, just, I was just like, okay, do it. <laughs> I went back to my chair. I was fucking annoyed. I, I was probably rude to this guy, but I really don't care. Was, I just, uh, I, I got nothing back from them. And so then it took like another 30 minutes for them to do that. And he, even though he told me it would take like five. And I finally get out of there. And just, uh, ugh. Ugh. So my tire's fixed, which is good. I have that going for me, which is good. One other thing, one interesting thing I did learn, the, the one positive uh, part, well, two things, actually. One is that you can put anything in a commercial nowadays. I'm, I was watching the news because I was sitting there. I never watch the news. I hate watching the news. It's all irrelevant or depressing. 
those are the two categories of news stories. It's irrelevant, depressing, and weather. <laughs> That's all you get on the news. Uh, and so there were a couple of irrelevant stories. And then there were some depressing ones. Like a guy got mugged in a McDonald's bathroom. A kid is dying and needs a heart transplant. Uh, a bunch of neighborhood watch people are uh, causing a big stir on the second anniversary of George Zimmerman shooting Trayvon Martin. So there's your depressing category. And then there was some irrelevant shit that I don't even remember because it was that it was that stupid. Anyway, it was like Nancy Bayless broke a new Georgia record today for the biggest cookie cake. And like, no one cares. That's not news. And so I learned that you can put pretty much anything in a commercial because the commercials that play on TV during the day, I, who, their target audience is stupid people. It must be because the commercials talk down to people like they're an idiot. And there was one of them was a, a, a commercial for one of those really shady law firms. It was actually I remember it because it had such a dumb name, Morgan and Morgan. Like, okay, if you're going to go into business with somebody, and your name is the same as their name, you don't need to put it twice. You just, you can just be Morgan Law Firm. Morgan and Morgan adds nothing. I don't care that there are two of you. Like, if you were brothers, maybe you could be, like, Morgan Brothers Law Firm. No, like, I think they're just two unrelated guys who both happen to have last name Morgan, and they're like, this is a good idea. Let's put both of our names in, right? Because I feel like they're both just really in insecure people, and if they had named the company Morgan Associates, they both would have thought they put his name instead of mine. <laughs> and so Morgan and Morgan Law Firm at Attorneys at Law, whoever, had a kind of shaking. I'm agitated. Uh, you can see my hands going. Had a commercial with magic tricks in it. <laughs> so it was like the other guys will try and fool you. And they were like, here's an example. And they were like, they put six playing cards on the screen. <laughs> I'm looking at this in complete disbelief. I'm sitting, I'll tell you where I was sitting in a minute. I was sitting at the, in the dealership, where exactly? And uh, I'm looking at the, at the news. And I was, I was on my phone most of the time. This commercial comes on, I put my phone down. I'm like, this is going to be good. <laughs> they put six playing cards on the screen. And it says, okay, pick one of you, pick a card and remember it. I'm like, I know what trick you're about to do. I've seen this before. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to remember the Jack of Hearts. And then they, like, shuffle the cards up really fast, and there's five cards. And it's like, your card's missing, isn't it? Because there's only five left. The assumption being, oh, they must have took out my card. How did they know which one I was going to pick out of those six? And, it's like, uh, and so then at the end of the commercial, the guy's sitting there, and, like, a rabbit is on his shoulder. Because people actually do pull rabbits out of hats, apparently. Apparently, people in modern magicians will actually pull rabbits out of habit, uh, rabbits out of hats. I, I can't even. Like, if you wanted to pick the most stupid, stereotypical thing for a magician to do, it would be pulling a white rabbit out of a black top hat, and he's got the rabbit there. Like you pick, you are literally catering to the lowest common denominator. By the way, the way they do that trick, where your card disappears, is that the. They put a bunch of face cards up for the six cards, and then they take all of those away and put up five other face cards that weren't there originally. So all six of the original cards are gone. Again, I mean, you could think you could you could you could, you could be that trick by actually yeah, by lying and memorizing two cards, or you could be that trick just by noticing that the number of like the colors are gone and that's sort of, that sort of thing. There was three reds and three blacks, and now there's like the wrong numbers they want to add up because it would have been two and four if your card had still been there. There's like a hundred ways to know that that trick is stupid. And that's what they put in their commercial. And just, it just is... So that was one of the things I learned. The second thing was that... <laughs> I, I still can't explain what this is. I met someone... I didn't meet someone. I met someone yesterday and today working the same position. And they have a job where when someone asks them what they do for a living, they have to lie. There's no way they say the truth. Because the, the truth would be... <laughs> so what, what are you? Like, what do you do for a living? What's your profession? They would, they would say, I'm a car dealership barista. <laughs> I said, no. Like, this is a job that I would never imagine existed. 
they have in the Toyota dealership in Roswell, Georgia, a bar, like a Starbucks style bar, and there's a barista there, like a guy in a green apron standing behind there in front of the TV playing the retarded news. You have the the Toyota dealership barista. <laughs> like, okay, when someone asks you what you do for a living, he definitely either says, I work at the car dealership, or I'm a barista. If he says both, every person looks at him like, what? That's not, that's not a real thing. <laughs> and it was like complimentary coffee. And, and like, they had like exp an espresso machine and like granola bars and stuff. Like, why couldn't they just have like a vending machine and put the granola bars on the table? And he... <laughs> I don't, oh, I, I can't, I can't, oh, I'm done, I can't do it anymore. I can't even, like, continue to relive this story, it was so weird. And it just... Yeah, so that's what I did uh, yesterday and today. And I'm working this weekend again, too, by the way. In case you were wondering, so this, will be the, this will be the fifth weekend in a row I've worked at least one day. In the month of February, which has uh, 28 days this year, I took a total of two days off. Two out of 28. Uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, I, I worked 13 days in a row, and then uh, today I, I, I've officially worked 12 days in a row again. And it looks like it's going to get uh, bad again. I mean, it's been bad the whole time. Uh, but for the next month, working on Sunday this weekend, we're lucky that a couple issues got resolved really quickly at the end of the day today, or I'd be working tomorrow, too. It's hard out there for a software developer. Okay, yeah, so that's what, that's what happened lately. That's what I've been up to. Other goals, uh, I'm actually, I, I managed to get through the past couple days without binge eating, which is really the rose, the silver lining to this whole story is that I'm still on track for my other goal, for my weight loss. I, uh, I did eat some cake, though, today, but I, uh, I still was underneath my calorie cap, amazingly. Mostly because I missed breakfast this morning, changing a tire. What was that yesterday? I don't even remember. It's, the past month is just a, a blur of staring into the data stage, gooey, and hating my life. Okay, see you tomorrow.